Hey everybody, this is Tom again in Western North Carolina, and this is a continuation of how to make a rocking chair, or per yesterday's post, how do make a rocking chair. I guess that's just part of my dyslexia. But anyways, I just felt like I wanted to show you guys this end result of my putting them back together. It's maybe a little bit excessive on the clamping, but you can sort of get the gist of how I clamped that, those two little strips in there to maintain the curve. I even used the big old chair stick as one of my clamping places. Anyways, I think it turned out pretty good. I'm going to unclamp it here in a little while and start working on my pegs. There I am again. Here I'm in the picture, maybe. It's me, Tom. Anyways, uh, as long as I wanted to show you that, I was going to show you uh, the next little thing. Not the pegs, but the drilling ramps for the front and the back. Anyways, this is the ramp that I have for the front. And this piece, is you can just make it any size you want. But the front just lays on it like that. And this board here is two and 13 sixteenths tall. And that's what I use to drill my front. And you drill, you drill on the low side. You're aiming your rungs in. Anyways, that's the front drilling rig. And this is the back drilling rig. Anyways, it can go either way. It can go like this, or it can go like this. But anyways, the uh, in your back, your back, and this isn't the back. This is another chair, but I'm just using it as a demonstration purpose. It just goes on there like that. In this back, you drill it on the high side. You drill up here. Drill up here. And then you can just flip this over and drill the other side up here. Anyways, these measurements on this, the measurement here or for this slope going up this way, and this is the slope. That the turn is the kickback in the back. The legs go out behind the chair. And it's determined by measuring between the two outside the airfoil and the bottom back rung, which was six inches. And then the difference between the length of the top rung and the bottom rung, which is one inch. So that this slope here is a one in six. One inch rise and six inches of run. And on this particular rig that I've got here, this measurement here, this measurement here happens to be 15 and a half. So that works out to be 2.583, 2.583. But according to my measurements here, that turned out to be 2.5 and 15 and a half and it, this can be almost any length you want but you got to be able to fit your from the bottom of the post up to where this starts curving you want to be able to fit it on there you don't you want to lay flat here you don't want to be into the curve so this this is a good size and anyways then this 
slope going this way is the slope that determines from the front to back angle. And it's com commonly called the seat angle. Anyways, on this particular form, and this here is 20 and a half, it works out to two, two and five eighths inches for 20 and a half. And I'm pretty sure that that angle could be figured out by taking um, half of the distance in the front and half of the distance in the back, the di length of the rung, so that's 17 and a half in the back, so that's eight and three quarters, and then 22 in the front, that's 11. And you subtract that number, eight and three quarters from 11, and you get 2.25. And then you put that number over 17 and a half, the distance from the front to the back. And these are all kind of just a little bit approximate because of these angles and stuff. But anyways, that works out to be 2.26 and that can be rounded off to two and one quarter over 17 and a half and then if you do the math that comes out to be pretty close to 20 20 and a half under your 2.2 and 5 eighths so anyways that's kind of some math, and you can also figure it out by that square method that's in the book. And uh, But these measurements are close enough, and in fact, these angle measurements, if they're a little bit off, it doesn't really matter that much. I mean, they can't be grossly off, but they can be a little bit off because these chairs are flexible. These rungs are flexible and they'll, they'll bend a little bit and they'll conform. And they have to bend a little bit even if they're perfect because of you're going into a hole at an angle. It's not exactly the same when you start as when you finish. So anyways, that's the little blurb on these uh, drilling ramps, and I showed you that back. I'm gonna take that back apart here, and you don't need to see that. It's just taking a bunch of clamps loose. Anyways, um, I'm moving on. This is just the very next day. This is Thursday. I think it's the 19th of August. Rained a little bit again last night, and we're just, I'm moving on, and I'm thankful. Hope you can be thankful. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you pretty soon again. I got to get these pegs in. And then I'm going to, you know, drill, put this whole thing together. And then once we do that, then it's going to be more intense because we're going to start doing stuff that I'm going to have to actually show you in the videos, how I go about you know, laying out the rockers and stuff like that and how to put them in. So anyways, see you another time. Thanks for watching.